So many Christians have lied in the name of Jesus Christ and have embarrassed Jesus Christ with our actions. Hardly anybody will listen anymore. This just really breaks my heart. This just stabs a dagger in my heart. It fills me with righteous anger, holy discontent. Christians, we're, we're Christians, man. We, we represent Jesus Christ. Christians is who we are. And if we don't, if we aren't going to be the salt of the world to give the flavor of Jesus Christ to the world, <coughs> if we aren't going to be the light at the top of the hill that doesn't get covered up by a bushel so the world can see the truth of Jesus Christ, then what are we going to do? If people can't listen to us as Christians, as ambassadors for Jesus Christ, if we can't be counted on to get the word of Jesus Christ out to the lost, then what good are we? What good are we doing here on earth? What, what's our purpose? It just breaks my heart. I've heard so many people say, you know, you Christians are such a bunch of liars and you're phonies. And, and I live a better life than you. Why should I live like you? You know, Harold Camping, he broke my heart. He, he broke my heart down to the bone when he came out last year with all these lies about the rapture. And the worst part about it was he said, he said the Bible guarantees it. He plastered it everywhere. God's holy word. He was lying about God's holy word. And you know how, how I always teach and preach about don't call God a liar. Don't call God's holy word a lie. A book of lies. Harold Camping is just made a mockery. And people just laugh now. And they say, yeah, the Bible, whatever. Now the Bible is the only text that's never been proven wrong. It's the only source of information in the world that's never been proven wrong, ever. The scientists hate they can't prove it wrong. The hero camping put it out there that the Bible said that, but it didn't say it. But people don't care, though. They don't believe that. They believe the Bible's a lie now. They believe that Christians are, are just a bunch of nut jobs. They were crazy. How dare he do something like that? Jesus Christ came from his throne in heaven. God's only son. Just in paradise. He came down to be born as a lowly man in a manger. To be born in a place where you know, the king, the prince of the universe, God's own son, born in a lowly manger on a cold night. It was that they couldn't even find a room. Couldn't even find a room for God's own son. He, had, he was in a manger. And he lived a life where people hated him. And people spat on him. And they mistreated him. And they were mean to him. And they were evil to him. And they treated him bad and wrong. What did he do? He loved them. He loved them back. He treated their anger and their hatred with love. And he told them the truth from God, God's truth. And he died on that cross for our sins. For you and me, people who are so unworthy. If that was the end of the story, it would have been magnificent. But he rose again on the third day and went back to heaven to be at the right hand of the Father. And when he left to go back to heaven, his only plan to get the good news, his good news of Jesus Christ spread around the world, was for his children to do it. There was no plan B. If we didn't do it, it wasn't going to get done. How in the world can we call ourselves Christians, Christians, representing Jesus Christ, and care so little about what he did on that tree on Calvary for us? To care so little. To just say, no, Jesus, we don't care what you did for us. We're not going to reap the harvest. We're not going to, we don't have time to reach the law. Somebody else is going to do it. So you got that problem with so few Christians. The harvest is plentiful. It's so plentiful, it's rotting in the fields. People just need Jesus Christ so bad in this world today. The evil, filthy, wicked, terrible, purulent, sinful cesspool that we live in. They need Jesus Christ now more than ever before. So few are willing to go out 
and share the good news. And then you've got so many wicked messengers that are all too happy to share the news, like Harold Camping and all the wicked televangelists and <coughs> all the wicked false prophets. They do so much damage. I, just, I wish they would just get out of the game, get back on the sidelines, just get a box of popcorn and just watch the game, watch the war. It's a war we're in right now. Let them watch it from the from the rear where they can sit back and not worry about anything because they're just ruining things, man. They're making things hard for Christians. This was prophesied thousands of years ago and then we would be in the great apostasy, the falling away from God in the last days. People flock to teachers who say things their itching ears want to hear. But I never thought it would fall this fast. I never thought it would be this bad so quick. I don't know where, how we went so wrong so quick. This nation that I live in, formerly America, now Sin Erica, the divided states of Sin Erica, wicked cesspool. It just breaks my heart. It just turned totally on God. And people need Jesus Christ in their lives now more than ever before. They need Jesus Christ in their lives now because time is so short, my friends. Jesus is going to come back any second of any day. God's going to tell him, Jesus, go get your bride. You know, the bride should be all. The bride should be everybody. The bride should be everybody on the earth. But sadly, it's going to be a small number, a holy remnant, because so few are saved. And those that are, a lot, most that are saved, are saved, are backslidden. They won't listen to the truth anymore. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to believe lies and false doctrines. They're, they're fulfilling prophecy of the great apostasy. They're flocking to people who say what their itching ears want to hear. People like Joseph Prince and Joyce Meyer and Benny Hinn and Creflo Dollar and Joel Olstein, Oprah Winfrey. It goes on and on and on. There's so many false prophets out there, so many liars. But how in the world, my friends, can we tell somebody about Jesus when we're so, when the church is a bunch of liars, so much of hypocrites? It's pathetic. It fills me with righteous anger. It fills me with holy discontent. It fills me with sorrow. It burns my heart. It makes me weep to see how far we've fallen and to see that people can't even trust Christians to hear the truth anymore. And, the, and those who could share the truth are too, are too lazy to do it. There's so few of us that are willing to get out there and reap the harvest anymore. The majority of the church is extinct, spiritually dead. Only a tiny remnant of us are on the endangered species list. God won't let us become extinct. He'll always raise up and keep a, a holy remnant. Why? Why won't we get out and do it? After all Jesus did for us, why would we just slap him in the face and say, we don't care, Jesus? I just don't understand, my friends. And you know, I was backslidden over half my life. I was a miserable person. I was a fake. I was a Sunday Christian, if I even went to church then. And that was during, most of that time was during my active duty time in the military, 20 years. Numerous frontline combat tours with, with the Marines. Dozens of times I know I should have been a dead. I'm a dead man walking. I should have died. I looked death in the eyes, but Christ snatched me away and spared my life, spared me from sitting in hell as a backslidden Christian right now, just agonizing, knowing what's going to come, knowing I'm getting an eternal body, that I'd stand at the great white throne judgment and I'd suffer forever in hell. But he spared me. I couldn't scratch the surface through all eternity to pay him back for giving his life for me. On top of that, he saved my life so many times when I was backsliding. I owe you everything, Jesus. And I'm nothing. I'm, I'm just your slave. I'm the least in your kingdom. I'm a tiny fish in a huge pond. But what I can do, I can work for you until you call me home. I can get out and reap the harvest. I can share the good news of Jesus Christ. I can preach the Holy Bible the way it's written, cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, verse, chapter, and book. And I will do that until you call me home, whatever way it is. I belong to you, Jesus. I'm your slave. I'm your foot slave. The world is hurting. It's evil and dying and wicked. People are angry. They're hateful. They're spiteful. They're full of wrath. People don't want to forgive anymore. They don't want to. They don't want to. They want to hold grudges and hatred. I used to hold grudges and hatred until the Lord taught me you have to forgive your enemies and love your neighbors, like you love yourself, like the Bible says. My friends, we just don't have much time. We don't have much time. Only God knows the day and the hour, but we know we're in the season. God's given us a sermon. Those of us who are watching, 
and waiting and excitedly hoping for Jesus Christ's return who are out there working for him night and day. Never through our power, just through the power of the Holy Spirit because we can't do anything on our own. But once he comes, my friends, it's too late. Twinkling of an eye, that fast. There's no time for a do-over, no time for a timeout. No time for, wait a minute, Jesus, I wasn't ready. You're not raptured or stuck here for seven years of hell on earth. And the only way to make heaven then is on the second run. And that's going to be finding Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you survive the initial traumas of the, of the tribulation, the, the wrecks, the accidents, the crashes, the, the, the mobs, the, the murders, the rapes, the robberies, all that stuff. You can survive that. You can find Jesus Christ without the Holy Spirit permeating like he does now. There'll be a tiny remnant of him around. He's omnipresent. But most of them will be in heaven with the bride. You have to do it on your own. Very little help of anything. You'll be on the run. You'll be starving. You'll be thirsty. You won't have shelter over your head. You'll be hunted down like a wild animal. You'll be arrested, beaten, tortured. Have your head chopped off. You have to refuse the mark of the beast. Why go through all that? Do it. Come to Jesus Christ now. And I want to say, if you're watching this video, I want to apologize for all the Christians who've hurt you and let you down. I want to apologize for all the Christians who've been hypocrites, who've told you lies, who've made a mockery out of God and a mockery out of the Holy Bible. Shame on them, and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, and I apologize for all of them. Okay? You just take take it out on me. I apologize for everybody. They're going to have to stand before God one day, and they're going to have to answer for the reason why they did what they did. They're going to have to answer for it. And for all those souls who couldn't come to Jesus Christ because they were poisoned, because Jesus Christ's own representative of the church were a den of snakes, a den of serpents, a bunch of liars, a bunch of crooks, a bunch of thieves, a bunch of phonies who drove people away from God. And we're supposed to lead them to Jesus Christ because we're Christians. We represent Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, my friends, how dare you do something like that? And I'm so sorry if you're watching this and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you're watching this and you're backslidden, fall on your knees now. Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. Ask your Lord and Savior to come back once again. Forgive you of your, of your backslidden state, your sins and iniquities. Restore that relationship. Have the Holy Spirit move back in your heart. I don't want to see anybody go to hell, my friends. Jesus especially doesn't want to see anybody go to hell. Hell wasn't made for humans. It was made for Satan and the fallen angels, the third that went with him. But now humans have filled it. It's time for us to get right with Jesus right now. We don't have much time left, my friends. Let's repent so we can get back out and we can reap the harvest that's so plentiful it's rotting in the fields. We can share the good news of Jesus Christ. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ until he calls us home. What a glorious time that's going to be but right now. My heart is heavy for the lost. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would burden. I pray, Jesus, for all the Christians who are lazy, who won't get out and reap the harvest and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Rebuke, correct, teach, convict. Don't give any of them any peace, joy, happiness, comfort, or satisfaction until they do. And Jesus, I rebuke all of those who have lied in your name and, and lied to people and just turn them away from you. I pray that they would stop, Jesus, you would stop them. So people could come to you, because it's, it's a shame that Christians drive the lost away. Help us to understand, Jesus, the huge responsibility we have as your children, as Christians, as Christians, representatives of Jesus Christ. Bring us back in your center of your will while there's still time, Jesus, in your precious name I ask it, amen. My friends, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I believe you went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father, to make a place in heaven forever for all Christians. Please forgive me of my sins. Come live in my heart. Wash me clean, white as snow. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. If you pray this prayer, my friends, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. If you'd like me to pray for you to be saved, send me an inbox or private message. Call me if you'd like to. I'd love to pray. If you have a friend, neighbor, loved one, co-worker, stranger, anyone who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if, you have a, if you're sick, a sick friend, neighbor, loved one, co-worker, a sick pet, you need a job, car, home, food, clothes, water, any need, Send me an inbox or private message. I have the gift of faith. God gave it to me. Nothing of my own. He gave it to me. I have mustard seed faith. I'll pray for you. Believing in my heart. Speaking with my mouth 100% knowing that God will answer all my prayers. If I pray in his holy will. Which is the same for you, my friends. 
Share this video with friends, neighbors, loved ones, coworkers, strangers. Drop it in blogs online. Get the word out while there's still time. We're so short. I'm out of time, my friends. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. May God bless you. Good night.